Greetings and salutations, YouTubers and Malfactors. Back here at Stop Logic Motorsports. And, uh, yeah, there's a reason why all my stuff's taken apart on the bike right now. I'm going to be uh, reinstalling this uh, AME CU. But we've been kind of tracking my blubbery, uh, blubbery bike issues. And uh, we're hooking up a UC bridge to the AME CU and going to go through the update process and everything. So, uh, basically you'll kind of peel it out of your bike find the corresponding four pin cable and hook the uh, bridge up to your computer well we'll be back once i uh, go through the rest of this process for the new uh maps that were given to me by uh takamoto which by the way i need to give them uh, immense kudos and thanks and oh what other other positive things can be uh, said because uh, unlike a lot of companies that will just kind of uh, jettison you off whenever you buy a product these folks not only try to you know make sure everything is uh, working well but it's working perfectly which I really admire that dedication to uh, that dedication to your customer base so definitely need to give Mike Spurgeon and all the folks at Takamoto the deepest and sincerest gratitude for helping me with this. So. Greetings and salutations, YouTubers and Malfactors. We're back here at StopLogic Motorsports, and Vox Populi has determined the next video that I'm doing. Well, we had a choice between the AIM ECU update for a Sierra 450 RL, or the Panthera YZ250, I guess, either they considered it a Gen 2 or an improved model. Uh, you guys unanimously voted that we do the ECU, which I'm actually pretty interested in. So first off, I really need to thank Mike Spurgeon and Takamoto, the staff there. As always, not only make sure that their products are good, but perfect, which is something I'm not quite used to in this line of uh, fun and hobby, sometimes work. I'm not going to go through all of the steps of how to do this ECU today. There's an in-depth set of instructions you receive. I'm going to hit on the highlights. So, we've got the UC bridge, and I'm working on getting a slightly longer USB cable because I don't own a laptop. Funny enough, I own three computers, no laptop, and a couple of tablets. At any rate, we're going to touch on what you will need to get them once you have a UC bridge. Now, I'll, uh, later on in the video, you'll see that my uh, AIM ECU is partially removed. To be able to do this, you're going to need to get your serial number, and it's good to take a picture of your serial number before you uh, really install the product. So whenever you get updates, you send them a copy of your serial number, and then you get your maps kind of tailored for your device. So we're going to go kind of over the UC bridge instructions. You're going to need to download the Spark software, which I've downloaded. I've made sure it's completely uh, updated. I also created an account on AIM and Spark. And from there, you'll end up connecting your computer to the ECU. You'll make sure everything's up to date. Now, if you have any custom maps, what you're going to also need to do is make a set of maps on your desktop all caps a maps and whatever you receive from Takamoto for your maps make sure that you locate those there that becomes important later on when you need to update based off of their map changes uh, you'll start with the firmware check make sure everything is up to date on your UC bridge on your computer on your software uh, everything like that all right, so I've got the bridge attached. I've got the uh, doohickey flashing. And then I need to refer back to the instructions. All right, do, 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 do. Okay. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. So the other part of the video is going to be going over most of these instructions. Uh, right now, we're just going to go ahead and kind of uh, get this to uh, fire up. Alrighty. And, 
And then green light. All right, let's see. Do we have it in the lower left? All right, so we're ready for connection. All righty. So we have everything plugged in. We basically went down to this bottom left-hand corner, got everything plugged up for connection. And uh, I'm logged into the Spark software, which I'm about to need to go ahead and log in. I'll help you track changes. So uh, the only downside is I don't have a laptop. For as much tech as I push on this channel, I have a laptop that's about seven generations old. So connecting this is kind of an act of Congress. All right, so we're gonna do a firmware check. Da, 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 da. Let's look, look for a little box with a question mark. And do a firmware check. All right, so we're using firmware 0.23. Production date was uh, June 20, 2022. Alrighty. Yeah. Outline below. Yeah, my firmware is, uh, looks like my firmware is pretty dang old. Alrighty. So, anywho. Uh,. Update ECU firmware. So file, update ECU firmware. Well. Goodness, it doesn't seem to. Alright. Go to the next step. Update. Okay, updates and ECU firmware. Alright, alright. Well, let's see, wait a second. Oh, yeah, so let's update our ECU firmware. Looks like we're riding here on the bottom. Two is seven, five. And this is cooking right along. <coughs> Bless you, sweetie. Actually, soon I'll have my lovely assistant help with the TPS reset procedure because, uh, yeah, unfortunately, not being mobile does really work really well for popping around. Alrighty, so we've updated the uh, firmware. The meat and potatoes of what you're going to be wanting to do is uh, updating your maps and your ECU. So, yeah, as they mentioned, get them your serial number. You'll get your maps sent over via email from Takamoto. And then uh, you'll want to make sure you make your AIM maps folder, which is what we kind of showed earlier. Basically, connect your computer to the ECU, connect your ECU to the bike where it has the plug for your ECU. And when you see that the light on the ECU and the light in the spark software is showing connected that's when you can start writing your ECU project to the uh, to the bike I don't have my bike over here right now because it's been raining all night and I'd have to push it through a gigantic mud hole from all the work that was done to the house but basically I'm gonna roll it from the garage to the back porch and run the cord out my back door yeah I know that sounds a little bit a little janky but uh, you know, it is what it is. So, you'll have your, uh, find your new folder with your map file. Put your, uh, connect your ECU to the connect, or hit your connect icon. Uh, red icon will show up the toolbar. Uh, you'll say write project to ECU. 
and then basically go get yourself a soda or a can of Shift Bar D for two to four minutes and wait for the uh, map updates to be done. So also we're going to go over calibrating the TPS sensor. This is one of the main reasons I actually bought the AM ECU over the Vortex and the GET ECU is that with the UC bridge, uh, you can actually calibrate your TPS without having to like rip a bunch of wires out and repin them and stuff. So this is, in my opinion, kind of a better option. Um, And we're pretty much almost done with this. We just have to do the TPS calibration after this is done. I think we're in we're in good shape. And then the uh, part, once I get the bike put back together, is we'll see how this uh, runs. I purposely oiled my air filter uh, like I normally do, which was giving the bike a lot of issues. If you've seen the uh, CRF450RL Adventure ride, uh, that blubberiness was on how oily I usually do a filter. So I'm kind of... a uh, you know, firm believer in making sure no oil gets into, uh, or no dust gets into my engine. We'll see if it runs a little better. All right, so we flash the ECU. That looks like that's all set. And we're going from calibrating or updating the maps to, uh, Da, 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 da. TPS calibration. So we're going to go ahead and go to TPS calibration. Uh, one minute. Uh, updates. Okay, so we have the map file. Okay, we're going to do this the way that it suggests. So open ECU project. I guess we'll save it. Okay. Uh, options, TPS calibration. So let's find our options thingy here. TPS calibration. So. Throttle position sensor. Throttle's completely closed right now. And now I will need to entreat the uh, help of my lovely assistant. So one second. Well, my lovely assistant did come over and get me helped out. Unfortunately, this amazing GoPro Hero 10 crashed, so I don't know how much footage I've lost. Uh, if need be, I'll kind of walk through the process later on when I see what this thing decided to throw out and keep. Well, see you guys in a few. And uh, we are uh, right to ECU at this point. And that's about as hard as it is to calibrate your throttle. So you'll see a lot of posts in the Facebook page, the CRF uh, 450 pages, where people that use a G2 throttle tamper like me realize that they only get 87% of their throttle opening. Not a huge deal for me since I ride a lot of single track. I'm not going wide open very often. But this right here will solve the uh, problem of the bike not reading the full range of the throttle. Uh, we'll take it out for a bit of a ride after this and kind of see what's going on. I slightly over-oiled my filter on purpose, or my second filter on purpose, to see if we still have the blubbery effect. What was happening in the re the impetus behind uh, going through all this trouble is when my filter would get slightly dirty or if I used slightly too much oil, my bike would run like a two-stroke that had been loaded up from lugging the engine for too long, and I'd have to basically clear it out. It was running a little rich. So we're going to see if this kind of solves the problem. And by slightly overoiled, I mean most likely it's kind of really overoiled.